Last year, I purchased and reviewed a Mitsubishi Heavy Industries AC, more specifically the SRK24 YVS-W6, a 2.2-ton split AC from Mitsubishi Heavy Industries that is imported completely built up from Thailand. It is widely available in all of South and Southeast Asia besides a few other markets. I then posted an update on this same AC three months later and the news was all great. So how has the experience been one year later? Now that we're heading into the second season for this AC with temperatures touching and exceeding 35 degrees in North India. Well, the AC has just had its first service and the experience has been less than satisfactory. To get the complete picture, watch this video till the end. Having experienced ACs from many brands over the years, I firmly believe that any split AC is only as good as its installation. Now, if you're planning on buying a Mitsubishi Heavy Industries AC in India or perhaps already have one, pay special attention to the warranty terms and conditions. I dwell deeper into this in my second video on this topic, links in the description, but the summary is that first of all you have to register the product within 15 days of purchase with IAPL Group the group that distributes MHI products in India. And second, you have to have two of what they call free dry services in the first year to activate your extended warranties on the PCB and compressor. Another catch is that this only applies to ACs purchased after 9th April 2021. Now coming back to my point about split ACs being only as good as their installation. Since these systems are split units, the better the gas piping connections between the indoor and outdoor units, the better the long-term performance of the AC. With Mitsubishi Heavy Industries air conditioners, you do not get piping included as part of the package. So essentially, you're paying a third party to connect your indoor and outdoor units. Real and proper care must be taken when installing these systems. You must choose your installation site carefully. The bends in the pipe must be given using a bender and the piping should be of the correct diameter and length. Not too small and preferably not too long. Usually you will find within the installation or instruction manual a number that specifies the minimum length of copper piping required. This is so that the pre-filled refrigerant inside the system can work at the correct pressure. Similarly, if you're placing the outdoor unit far away from the indoor unit and the main copper pipe is extra long, this should be compensated with extra gas in the system to maintain that same gas pressure. Now, I won't go into the technicalities in this video and admittedly, this is the realm of experts, but this particular AC uses R32 gas that is generally expected to be at 260 PSI of pressure when the AC is off and around 130 PSI when it's running. On the AC itself, these specifications of pressure are in MPA and the number is 4.15 slash 1.60 MPA. The quantity of gas required is also important and this AC specifies 1.6 kg of R32 refrigerant. Now a little bit about the business model of the IAPL group in India. Instead of having a centralized system of dispatching service personnel, they have given this responsibility to individual dealers within your area. So the dealer that I purchased my AC from is also responsible for getting the service for the AC done. This may be good or bad depending on how the dealer is in your area and it makes it more difficult to make a generalized recommendation. So instead I will share my own experience and this is extremely subjective. You may not experience the same issue with your AC and even if you do, the way it will get handled may be completely different. So basically the AC was serviced on the same day as the request was raised and the actual procedure was the same as most companies follow nowadays with a pump being used to pressure wash the outdoor and indoor units and a cover being used on the inside to prevent water spillage onto the walls. They even cleaned up after themselves so the overall service was in line with what I expected. When it came to letting the AC run for a bit to make sure it was performing well, this was not done. The technician advised me to switch off the AC as he was leaving as he said that the AC was still wet. This made sense to me so I did not probe further, although this was contrary to what all the other AC service technicians from other companies generally do. Anyway, a day later when I turned this AC on, instead of the bone chillingly cold air that it normally delivers, there was no cooling effect in the air coming out of the vents. Now I tried all different settings and even running it for a prolonged period, but to no avail. My first thoughts were that the AC did not have any refrigerant inside the system and that was preventing the compressor from kicking in and only the fan was running. 
this seemed to concur with the power consumption being noted on the Wipro smart plug, which showed only about 70 watts of power being drawn. So I called the dealer to notify him of the issue and by now it was around 7 p.m. So I didn't expect them to come that day. But I made it clear to him that since this was a premium AC, I expected a quick resolution of the problem the next day. Well, it may be not so hard to guess that this was not actually what happened. The next day, nobody came in the morning and till the afternoon, there were no calls either. So I called the dealer again to check on this and he assured me that the technicians had been called to the boss's place for an important task, following which they were coming straight to my house. Long story short, they didn't and the dealer also did not answer my calls three hours later. This led me to message him on WhatsApp and he did reply and I simply asked him to expedite the repair. At 4 p.m. I receive a call from the technician who asks me if he can come, to which I say that I've been waiting all morning for them and that they should come immediately. Well, they arrived shortly thereafter and very quickly it was established that there was no gas in the AC system. Now here begins the cat and mouse game of AC warranty in India. Everything from here on for the technicians hinged on whether the AC was under warranty or not. They reported back to the dealer who asked them to ask for a bill. To which I said that since this was such a personalized buying experience with the dealer servicing only local customers, he should have me on his records. Well, it turns out that the AC had run out of its 12 month warranty some 10 days ago. And at this point, this is used almost as a tool to shirk all responsibility for the AC. So I said to them that at that moment, the important thing was that a barely one year old AC had no gas in it and the emphasis should be on repairing it rather than trying to shift the monetary liability away from the company for such gross underperformance of what is a very high quality product. Now the next hour was spent only in establishing who would pay for the regassing of this AC. To be fair to the dealer, he did offer to cover 50% of the cost of the gas. If we look at the situation in complete black and white, then yes, the warranty had run out 10 days ago and legally, you can't force the company to reimburse you for the cost of the repair. But principally, having to go through such a scenario is unfair and unacceptable for any customer. I've had ACs in the past that have needed regassing owing to a leak, but this is usually a good few years down the line, never within the year. So this situation hints at poor quality installation or low quality piping being used in the install. Because frankly, this is not a product that is handled in any way by the customer. It is purchased and then installed and serviced by the dealer. And if they do a good job with this, then the AC should perform flawlessly. Anyway, I accepted the dealer's offer of 50% cost contribution, following which one of the technicians had to go and fetch the gas and the whole repair process, including looking for leaks and welding the pipes in two places, took four hours. Since it was already late in the day, the technician having himself waited for three hours for the decision about payment and then for the gas and the other refilling equipment to arrive was hasty in the repair. Although the actual process of looking for a leak was done diligently, the handling of such a premium AC was less than desirable. They manhandled the indoor unit and propped it up using pliers and finally a metal box. Hardly the kind of service you expect when you pay top dollar for a product. When they found the second leak on the outside wall, another weld was necessary and I had some anxious moments watching them weld so close to the electric wiring of the AC, even though they used a metal place to isolate them. I have my doubts about the longevity of the welding repair work, but the technician assured me that the weld would never give away, even if the pipe itself collapsed. I inquired about the other common issues that they saw with these ACs and he confirmed what a lot of people have been saying in the comments on my previous videos about this AC. He said that this AC uses two PCBs, one for the indoor and one for the outdoor unit. Combined, they would cost around 36,000 rupees to replace and they were a common weak link in this AC unit. He said that as a result, he would recommend a non-inverter style AC instead. So what can we summarize from all this? This experience has certainly left a bad taste in my mouth about this AC. I still think that the hardware is excellent. Unfortunately, as is usually the case in India, the service has been subpar. The dealer himself has been fairly responsive, but I did have to waste more than a day for something that I would expect them to fix on a priority basis. It is the installation and servicing part that is of concern. Clearly, whenever a fault has arisen so far, it is the result of these technicians' lack of quality workmanship. 
So what can you do as a customer? Well, first of all, being aware of all this is a step in the right direction. Making sure that the installation is 100% to spec is of crucial importance. And then I would recommend setting a reminder in your calendar for the day the warranty of the unit expires. Make sure that the service is done before this date so that if there are any issues, the company cannot wash its hands off its responsibility as easily. Since the repair, the AC has performed as expected, but my confidence in its long-term performance is at an all-time low. I know that at some stage, this kind of shoddy repair work will eventually lead to another case of gas or refrigerant loss. When that happens, once again, the cost of refrigerant will have to be borne by me, and I will make sure that I also change the entire piping the next time around. That means possibly another 3000 rupees for something that should have been done right in the first installation itself. So would I still recommend the Mitsubishi Heavy Industries AC? I think it is still a quality product that you should consider and you should not base your buying decision on one particular experience that any customer faces with this unit. At the same time, I really like the all-inclusive nature of LG ACs that come with piping included and have trained in-house team of technicians for servicing and installation that are better at the job, at least in my experience. For a comprehensive review of the Mitsubishi unit and its features, do watch my review on this channel, links in the description. And also check out the three month update, which has some additional points. I'm sure armed with all this knowledge, you should be able to make the right purchase based on your requirements and then more importantly, get it installed correctly and ensure that you get it serviced and checked before the warranty expires. Until we get any meaningful warranty on air conditioners, which means at least 24 months, this is the sad reality. You will also find links to the LG AC review in the description. I hope you found this video useful and if you did, please consider subscribing to this channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next one.